today for dinner we were having everything that was left over in the fridge and freezer combined into one thing. This absolutely repulsive looking meal is a Swedish meatball instant pot. Probably disaster, if I'm honest, but we'll see. Check the description because I'll update that. Told you guys what I tell you guys what I think. All right, so to prepare for our dinner tonight, I'm gonna pop this hot toddy in the oven. I'm gonna add some canned pineapple because that's just how we do it. We prefer pizzeria. We don't like stuffed crust, rising crust, any crust. We really just like the pizzeria DiGiorno pizza, and that's what we'll be having for dinner. Tonight we are having arroz con pollo, and that's basically, it's a one pot meal. Stay tuned to the end of this video and you can see how I made it. The link for this recipe is in the description. So tonight for dinner we're having uh, some breaded oven chicken, baked potato, a dinner roll, and some vegetables. For dinner we are having Tuscany chicken over pasta. I don't even have any sides, it's been a really long day. So, just pasta. I am also making more of that goulash. This isn't in the what's for dinner video. This is just because I have to have food on hand at all times for my husband who eats more than just breakfast, lunch, dinner, and snacks and things. But I make this more than I make anything. I'd suggest giving it a try because it's pretty inexpensive and it's really easy to do. And it's, if you don't know what I'm talking about, it's in the, sorry, I'm pregnant so I'm always out of breath. Um, it's in what's for dinner number two and it's written in the description. So I had in my fridge a bunch of leftover everything, bell pepper, I had onion and tomato, frozen tomato paste and some garlic. So I'm just going to make some kind of one pot rice and ground beef mash, I guess. That's what we're gonna try to do. There's a recipe, I'm, oh, I've got some fresh thyme over here. And I'm loosely basing this off of, and I will link that in the description below. <laughs> Dumping in the, don't bite me, the broth and the rice. And a bay leaf. And I think I'll just add a bag of frozen vegetables. You need to wash your hands. Okay. This recipe looks really easy. It's just two cans cream mushroom soup, some kind of pasta, already made meatballs, beef broth, and milk and sour cream. It goes in the pressure cooker. The recipe is from, I don't know where, this is a screenshot, wildly chained, but I will have it linked in the description below. So we're just gonna put everything in the instant pot and see where it takes us. I do not have two boxes of cream of mushroom soup. I don't know what it's talking about. So I'm just using condensed and I hope it turns out. I also only have half a box of pasta and I really thought I had a whole one, but I don't. So this could be a disaster, but we'll see. Check the description to see if uh, it worked out because I'll write the details there below. All right, so this wasn't as bad as I thought it was gonna be. It was actually pretty tasty. And I think the kind of box soup they're talking about is like the Lipton instant soup boxes, but I don't know, I don't think I've ever seen a mushroom flavored instant soup box. So I used can of condensed, two cans of condensed and water and it turned out all right. And it actually tastes really good. So, I mean, I honestly, babe, what do you rate this? Hmm. 8.08. So it was easy enough that I might make it again. But an 8.08 is pretty low on the 8 scale. And I may just, if I do make it again, it'll be next year. <laughs> Does Josiah like it? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I guess I'll make it again if he'll eat it. We're making one pot chicken adobo. She makes her own sofrito. I don't have green bell pepper. So I'm using red. And she makes her own ad adobo seasoning. This is what we're going to be putting on the chicken and marinating. We have some pigeon peas. I had some questions in my last video about what pigeon peas were. They're not really peas. They're more like beans. Commonly found in rice dishes in Puerto Rico and probably other places. But tomato sauce, it was frozen. Because if I only use a little bit from the can, I freeze the rest until I need it. And we're going to put this all together.
So we're just marinating the chicken in that seasoning for 30 minutes. I've gone over this a lot on my Instagram stories. But I don't cook so much on my Instagram stories anymore because I'm cooking here on YouTube. In order to not have sticking meat to your stainless steel pots and pans, you have to wait until the pot is really, really hot. So I'm heating this up over medium-high heat, not to a smoking hot, but when the oil is starting to sort of shimmer and dance, you can see it, that's when you'll add the meat. And you don't lift the meat off, because it'll be stuck. When you're able to lift the meat off to flip it over, that's when the meat is browned. So your pan basically tells you when to turn your meat, and I will show you that in just a minute. See how it's kind of shimmering? It's dancing, you see? And you can also smell it. Another good way to test is to dip your fingers in water. And if you get that sizzle, it's time to go. See how it looks shimmery? Does that make sense? So we're gonna take our chicken. If I try to lift this right now, it's stuck. You can feel it pulling on the pan. That means it's not ready to lift up and flip over just yet. So, get your pan screaming hot before you add your meat. And don't try to flip your meat until it lets you flip it. Our goal right now is not to cook the chicken thoroughly. It's just to brown it. Create some fond down below. Because the chicken will finish cooking when we add it back to the pan and simmer it. Into this, I'm going to add the vegetables. The seasonings. We're going to add the tomato sauce. The water. Stir that all around. And if you can see, all those bits are no longer stuck to the bottom. So your stainless steel is actually really easy to clean if you know how to work it. My sauce is crunchy because it was frozen. <laughs> if anybody's wondering. Now we're going to fold in the gandules or pigeon peas and the rice, rinsed and drained. I'm, I'm able to find that at Walmart. And a cup of rice, basmati rice. I'm gonna fold that in. All done. And I'm gonna stick this chicken right back on top. Yeah. You got a camera? Are you filming? Yeah. Okay. Let me see. I'll give it right back. Okay. So now that we've got this back up to a simmer, we're going to cover it. Okay. Put it on low. And then cook it for 20 minutes. 25 minutes. This is 20 minutes. I am adding the green olives. I totally forgot. It's almost done, and I'll just mix them in. Let them cook a couple more minutes. I'm sure it'll be fine. I really love the flavor that the Spanish olives give. These ones are called Spanish queen olives. Gives the dish. So I just found some stuff in the freezer. This is chicken from when we went to my mom's a couple weeks ago. I literally just threw it in a sandwich bag and I hope that it's all right. I'm defrosting it right now. And some baked potatoes. Well, they're gonna be baked potatoes, but they're a little squishy. They've seen better days, but, you know. Balling on a budget. Balling on a budget. Thanks. And I found a frozen dinner roll and Josiah requested broccoli, so I'm probably gonna just make this. And that'll be what's for dinner. I'm gonna pop these in the microwave. I'm not even gonna use the oven. I'm just gonna microwave them for like four minutes. All right, I set my Instant Pot to saute. Mom. And when it says hot, Mom. I'm gonna add the chicken. I've got butter in there and I'm just gonna brown the chicken on hot and then set it aside. 
I'm just using the browning function. All right, I browned the chicken, so I'm just going to add the mushrooms and garlic. I have here a tablespoon of soy sauce and some, it's supposed to be chicken broth, but all I have is vegetable broth. And we're going to deglaze. I added also the Italian seasoning. And we're going to scrape up the pond in the bottom of the instant pot. Because that's all those brown bits, that's where the flavor is. That's why it's important to brown or saute your chicken in the actual Instant Pot, because if you did it separately, you would lose all of the flavor from this fond. We're gonna add our browned chicken and all the juices that came with it. The purpose of sauteing the chicken was not to cook it all the way through, it's still raw. So we're gonna pressure cook it at five minutes. I'm serving the Tuscan chicken over pasta. I'm using Campanelli. I don't have heavy cream. It tells you to put a certain amount of heavy cream and Parmesan cheese together. So I'm just gonna do milk, Parmesan, and some cream cheese. See how that turns out. When I release my pressure cooker, I throw a towel over the top so that it doesn't spit everywhere. And once that releases, I'm gonna put it back on saute and throw in, it says to throw in spinach and uh, sun dried tomato, but cooked spinach, that's like the only thing I really cannot eat. I try not to be picky, but I just cannot do cooked spinach, so I'm not doing it. And I'm just doing the tomato. Our pin dropped. There was a silver pin, I should have shown you that. It was flush, and now it's dropped, which means the pressure is gone. Another thing I do with my pressure cooker is when I open it, I use this handle as a lid holder. All right, and now we're gonna remove the chicken and pour in the tomatoes. I'm gonna stir that around a little bit and then add my cream. I made a cornstarch slurry, which is just cornstarch and water. If you try to add cornstarch straight into your dish, you're gonna have little cornstarch clumps. So you make a slurry by just, this is a three and a half tablespoon cornstarch and a quarter cup water. It says to do that in the recipe. But a slurry is basically just cornstarch and water. That way you can pour this in and thicken your sauce without having cornstarch clumps. Right, my sauce is thickened, I've added my slurry. I've added the chicken back and I'm just gonna pour this over pasta noodles. Like gandules? <laughs> <laughs> Josiah, you eat beans?